Well, yeah. Yeah, that old tractor's got a got a hydraulic leak on one side there. Went backwards for a little ways. But, anyways, got us that hydraulic leak. Pretty much tell where I've been at with that thing. Uh, did get that. That's that John Deere right there. So. I already got that cart built for it in there. I think I'll go ahead and paint it, you know. Get that part done. But you know, when you... When you... When you buy one of these engines, you know what I mean? At that point, you're pretty much committing to the fact that you're going to, you're going to need a cart to put that engine on right there. Four wheels, I'm talking about. So, anyways, regardless of that, John there with that fluffy paint. So, you know, that's what we're working with up to now. You know, I, I, I mm, it's John Deere, what can I say? You know, does have a pulley on it. I probably have to get that. I probably have to get that key out of that flywheel right there. You know, if you're going to start with one piece, you have to get that. You have to get that key out of there. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Uh, you have to get that key out of one side in order to set the side plate. You know, you squeeze your flywheels together up on them Babbitt bearings right there to take that side play out of it. Got a wooden pulley on that. So, muffer. So, you know, it's all here. Our old plane. I hear you. This little thing right here, I'll, let you, I'll tell you, I'll tell y'all something about these uh, international McCormick Dairy and M engines. Um, this little thing. Came out of one of these M's here. Uh, this one being well used. If I brighten it up here a little bit, we might be able to see. Okay. If you can see that, about halfway up right there, it's got a wire ring in it. And it's wore crooked. Where, where that little thing was a sitting there moving, vibrating, in use, and wore it crooked. So it would surely seep back if it was used. So, you know, make a new one, just use that as a pattern. And that thing goes right in the bottom of these carburetors. Mixers, they're called. Mixers, they're called, referred to. A carburetor, I think what differentiates a carburetor from a mixer is most of the time a carburetor has an idle circuit in them. A mixer only has one circuit. A carburetor has two circuits, one for running and one for idle. But most of these... And this is to answer a question. Uh, reply to a thread on Harry's old engine. 
website and uh, B uh, Buckley 18 uh, he done already posed uh, a question a comment on there a thread as concerning his mixer the engine wouldn't start or wouldn't run uh, M model spark plug would be a McCormick deer and I'm sure but uh, and this right here was ready to go in my electrolysis tank I'll just hang that down in there on a metal rod and let that electrolysis clean it up and and after it comes out of that electrolysis nine times out of ten these fittings all all appliances are usually comes out okay but this is a good one to uh, use as an example to answer that thread about these things uh, having one out on the workbench here where you can actually look at it and uh, uh, r r rather than typing in a story and and this being uh, this would be a, a more complete one I just don't have the needle valves in it I'm not sure where I put them at. Um, uh, they, they would have needle bells in there. Uh, one on each side to, to comprehend with that one. This is a six horsepower. But uh, there would be three identical to this one. And the reason this, this thing here exists, the reason that's in these, uh, all of these has that in there, the three ones, three needle valve mixer they're referred to but you would have three needle valves they're interchangeable uh, that one don't that don't have no I'll show you this little that little thing there that little check valve is in it's behind that little seat right there that little seat comes out and it that would be right up in there and, and there's a seat on this thing here. And usually they're in there so tight you can't get them out. And it's not, not necessary to get them out. To the extent of... If you have one of these engines. And you're not going to run kerosene. Uh, it's advisable when you make that gasket to go on here. Is do not cut the hole in it. If you're going to run kerosene in this engine then you would have a hole right here and this is for water if you're running kerosene from the tank then you would inject water uh, for better combustion cleaning and there's a myriad of reasons you would do that but if you're running gasoline from the tank you would only use this one and both of these will be closed off. Uh, and uh, for the reason for the water, uh, uh, just look it up. <laughs> now, let's use this one right here. It's a good example. That, that's the way you usually find them out there in the wild, you know. Uh, about half rusted away. And... Uh, But this thing right here, th this is an original setup that would go right in there. There would be a small gasket around this small end here. Uh, you can punch one of them out of gasket material the thickness of a, a cereal box or less, or just a very thin gas proof gasket. But this thing goes in there like this, come back like that, and then it pushes up in that hole in the mixer and protrudes out on the inside there 
for the Venturi effect. And on the original one, that spout, the pickup, this is called a siphon. Um, and, and this being the pickup tube, and it almost touches the bottom of the housing in there on the original one. It goes really deep. Now, you can make yourself one like this. That's just a copper, I mean a brass rod turned to disseminate this. That using them sizes. If you take it apart, it's identical to it. And you thread it on the inside as this one is. It has a seat in yonder. A hole going up through there. And then on this one, shop built, it's a copper tubing soldered into the bottom as a siphon. This being that, um, and, and there's there's not a gasket on this here. Uh, this will be in there, and then you screw this in, and that goes up there, and and you. You, you just want that good, you just want that firm. You don't want all that too tight up in there. And then you would screw this in there, and, and that would block that seat off when you turn it. Normally on these ends, you know, a quarter of a turn or a half a turn is all you need uh, running. So, what has part to tell you what Oh, I see, I never did knock that out in there. And the reason being, this goes in an electrolysis tank, and once you bring it out, that little piece of pop metal will knock right out of there. And, and there is a, a, a seat on the water, the water circuit, there is a needle valve and a seat that protrudes in there. So you just keep that closed all the time if you ain't running no kerosene. And that's a drain petcock right there. The fuel goes in right here. And it fills up this reservoir. And then when that reservoir gets full, it has a little trough right here. A little spillway. That being the level of the fuel in here, which is right underneath that spigot, that uh, siphon. And the uh, overspill comes out and drains back to the tank through this, this fitting. It has a drain plug here. You can take that out and drain the starting chamber. This chamber over here don't have any feed to it. This, this whole chamber from here to here to here, all around to there. And if you overfill it by putting the fuel in the overfill, in the plug, it will overspill with this channel into this reservoir, come across, and then back into the tank. Part of the reason that this is a that's your venturi. The bottom of this right here fits the smaller hole in, 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 that, in that mixer right there. It forms a taper. See, when you feel that right there, it's pretty, it's pretty even. Even to the point, if this is a loose fit in a mixer, you, you need to put some gasket sealer around there before you put that down there because it can actually, it, it, it can suck air if you don't use gasket sealer on your gaskets. So, the top part is larger to meet this larger size in there, going there. Reason for the, one of the questions there that was quite at length was, um, how many, how many holes in that, in that, uh, compensating valve? And that compensating valve, let's see consists of this it's a it'll have a guide rod in there this is a three horsepower right here 
So this guide rod will go from one end to the other out the back back there. And on that, this compensating valve only has two holes in it. That's a factory original, late model. Comes in here. Okay, the this part right here. Rest on that seat in there. So if that seat in, a, in that mixer top right there, if that seat is eroded away, if it's rusted away, then it can suck air around your compensating valve. When you look down in there, you can see that that, that, that compensating valve that spring holds it against the forward movement there. And the seat around the outside there is important as to air fuel ratio. If you have too much air going in there, then it can be to the point where you can't even control it with your needle valve. So the, the ratio is set by how many holes is in let me get everything back together here and these little springs is as important as any part on this engine this little spring right here is that important and I have noticed that that some aftermarket springs uh, there's some aftermarket springs out there that are just a little bit too strong. It don't let that valve flutter like it should. Uh, these are these are supposed to be made out of that there beryllium copper or something. See how soft that is? How how easy they work? So uh, that that that's that. But this is that unit there that's inside. That that mis inside this mixer top, even to the point when you put this cover on the back right here, this cover should be installed with a gasket sealer around the edge right here before you put the end on it. Because if it leaks air here, if it sucks air in around the back here, then it ain't coming through your compensator, and that compensator puts a little vacuum suction uh not vacuum it's suction no yes it's suction uh it forms a vacuum down here in the bottom on the suction and pulls that compensator open and the reason for the spring in there is if it needs more air than what the compensator compensates then that spring relieves it and lets it get the more air But you'll find these. You, you, you will find these that are. Uh, I, I will tell you something. Uh, hit and miss. And, and also on. Uh, hit and miss enterprises and, and I'm saddened to hear that they they they're not in business anymore is 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 what my info was so uh we, we've lost another supplier right there that uh has been my go-to supplier for many years uh early on uh Ed Dees was a uh, uh, he he know, he knows about these engines. Uh, he he done a great service to the hobby. Uh, in, any way you look at it. But you know, just to pour this 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 many here, and and talking about hit and miss enter enterprises. Uh, some years back, uh, I, I ordered I ordered one of these things. Right, I ordered one of these. I ordered one of these. A
Yeah, you know, I'm talking about hit and miss enterprises. Uh, all the good parts that they made up there. One, one time I ordered one of these. Uh, that that one's broke. This is not it. It was many, many years ago uh, that I ordered that part, but I remember it to today. And, and I ordered one of these venters that goes in here. And uh, uh, this is what they sent. It's a piece of PVC pipe uh, cut off and, and, and trimmed up to the same size uh, uh, to fit in there. Uh, it'd be in the same size to fit, fit in that one and a half right there. And that's one I made right there to replace it. But uh, 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 this is what they shipped. And uh, uh, when I got it, uh, uh, it's just a piece of pipe they put in there as a spacer. You know, it would have functioned just as well without it. But at any rate, uh, uh, I didn't care for it. I didn't use it. So that's all I got to say about that. I do have several engines that has hit and miss valves in them. Uh, they did valves right, among some other parts. But uh, moving on, this is a three horsepower here, and this is a three horsepower. It's done broke. Uh, this goes on the other end down there even. But this is the pop metal version. So, and it does have, it was a kerosene engine. It has a lot of holes in it. And, and, and the engine run, uh, it's, I'm not saying the engine won't run or anything like that. This is factory. This is a metal one right here. You know, it's a tubing with a flat plate there crimped against it, but that, that comes from the factory. Um, it has smaller holes in it than this one even, but the same amount. Uh, this one, that's a metal one. Part of it's gone. But and 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 even on the one and a half horsepower, there's an early one that's a metal, and then um, th this is a late model with the gasoline. Uh, th these are out of gasoline style M's uh, with two holes in them, as to attest to the air fuel ratio. If you have an international one and a half horsepower that was a kerosene engine, it'll have all of these holes in it. Only you need that if you're going to run kerosene. If you're never going to run kerosene in it, you wouldn't put this in it because it it you it, it the air fuel ratio between gasoline and kerosene is different. And this compensated, these amount of holes compensated for that fact. That's all I'm going to say about that. Look it up. But these are all good, usable. They've just been replaced by new ones, you know. Um, and, and all the engines I build, um, I definitely put one in there. And, and, and of late, I, I have been using four three sixteenths holes equally spaced across instead of the six um, and, and two um, I think two works better and, and of late um, you, you know how 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 do you yeah, here's an oddity that, you know, you know, how do you explain this? Uh, this is original part out of a, 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 a McCormick Deering. Has a part number on it and everything right there. Uh, identical uh, to this one, this one. And these all being out of the same type of engines. But this one in particular came from the factory. It has the holes halfway casted into the... Uh, that looks like a little... I'm sure it's a casting. 
and uh, but it, it don't come it didn't come through so this engine came from the factory with no holes in it whatsoever think about that one a minute you know how rare is that just thinking about it Well, you know, let's kind of think about these old engines. Uh, you know, if you have a friend, you know, up the street that has a small lathe, and you need one of these parts here, say you took this out and it broke, well, it's a very simple part just to turn there at home. You don't need to get the uh, catalog out and start ordering parts immediately. You know, just it's just a, a, aluminum. Uh, you can make it out of brass equally well. Uh, steel, if you make this out of steel, it'll rust really bad. And if I can get on the high horse about, I guess you all know it was a coming, sandblasting. Uh, 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 in my opinion, in my opinion, if if you want to ruin this part right here, then by all means, sandblast it. Um, uh, to the point where that if I know a part has been sandblasted, then, you know, I, I won't even trade for it. Uh, uh, sandblasting totally ruins these old parts. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I might add, to sandblast this, this mixer, that's all well and good, let's say. But when you did that, you didn't free up any threads. Uh, you, you didn't benefit the unit. You just kind of cleaned it. You, what you did is you drove little rust particles into the metal. Think about that. Um, especially... If you sandblast this and then you prime it, uh, you have really done it a disservice at that point because you captured whatever rust is in the pinholes that the sandblasting didn't get behind and push outward. You got it captured in 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 there. Uh, you get a nick on the paint and uh, moisture gets in it and it just migrates. Uh, Key word being electrolysis. Just saying. Next project. Bolt broke off in it. Okay, probably should drill that out. Get that out of it. It's got a dirt dauber in it too. Let's get their holes on there. Just saying. 